he goes in over Neesmith. So that all right. Well, let's have Neesmith let's have the is. debate that Joe Sway's been raring to have since the second quarter of the game. Okay. Um, hey, I'm not ready to trade away Neesmith, but man, my boy Bay I, went off. Not even that. It's just Bay went off. We talked about – you're not going to judge it after one game, but we talked about just um, Bay, you know, who, Bay, else Bay, is, Bay. who else is playing that's kind of drafted in and around that. And obviously cracking Detroit's rotation or in Sadiq Bay's case starting lineup um, is something you can do on a roster like this. But the dude's playing 30 minutes as a draft pick that was in the, in the conversation for who the Celtics picked there. So you're going to get a look at a bunch of these guys coming through here, and it's going to be kind of that first wave through – seeing what some of these kind of mid-range rookies have. This was your first look at Bay. What would you think, Joe Sway? He's your guy. Uh, I, love, I love what I saw, John. I, I didn't expect the uh, the, the three-point shooting to be this efficient, at least this early in his career. But defensively is where I, I was really uh, – I, I liked him for the Celtics big time. I mean, obviously the three-point shooting is what – you know, the, the three and D, the guy that is sort of uh, – I feel like Brad's offense has been, three, you know, thirsting for for years now. And I just thought he was the perfect NBA guy to go ahead right now. Now, in a, a year or two – Will Neesmith be better? I mean, we have to wait and see, but I just think defensively, he's just his his body type, which is again another thing I really like about Neesmith. You know, I think that's a, a huge uh, addition to a team that that has to play against some of the some of the you know the, the, the Kevin Durant and the Giannis Antetokounmpo. You know, some of the toughest uh, players in the front court, and I think he could have really helped this team right away. We have to wait and see what's going to happen with Neesmith, but I mean, Sadiq Bay, he he he's already checking all the boxes. Huh. That's a Bay Insider right there. I, I got nothing to add. I'm I mean, telling you, the Celtics, the Celtics, you know, obviously we talked about it with the TPE. They're gonna have to address that that wing position because at the end of the day, like they need someone like that, another three and D guy or something of that magnitude. Yeah, well, yeah. The his South- tweet tonight. Uh, Sealing his tweet tonight said uh, Jeremy Grant having a nice audition for that Celtics TPE. Yeah, that might have been me. Is that a source? <laughs> that was definitely you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was you, John. <laughs> but what's Bobby's guy? Syracuse grad, right? Yeah, uh, he's, look, I mean, the reason the guy, wrong. the reason guys point to him, much. It's, another, it's another example of how how weak that wing position is for the Celtics, man. Get him out. Secondary wing, wing defender. The reason people defender. point to Grant is just because the money works, not not necessarily because he's on the trade block. He was one of those guys that, like, you know, the Pistons were like. Right, right. Who, who's who will play for us? You know, and <laughs> who can we, we overpay? We, we've got money. Who can we overpay? You know. <laughs> yeah, but to Grant's credit, he's kind of like he's definitely like t- making the most of his of his opportunity to play. So I mean, honestly, it goes back to like, can the Celtics? <laughs> I mean, if this guy gets too good, then he's just gonna be another player that's out of the question because all they have is a TPE to offer. I mean, we spent twenty minutes talking about Rob Williams. Would you trade Rob Williams for Anthony Davis? I think we talked about that for 20 minutes in the last show. And then Rob Williams, again, you know, yeah, I know he got he got hurt in this one. But even prior to that, it wasn't like he was playing much at all. Again, I don't know what this guy has to do to get some significant well, burn on the team. Jeremy Grant loves himself some Pistons basketball right now because, you know, his his minutes, his shots, everything on this team is up, you know? He gets his to just – up on this team for sure. He gets yeah. to just chuck it. 24 field goal attempts. I mean, this is a guy who's averaged, you know, 20 something minutes per game, 10, 12 field goal attempts per game. And he gets to come here to Detroit and just chuck it, you know, 24, 24 times in one he's game. He's loving life. Yeah, yeah he's, he's loving life. Career high. He almost hit it. Yeah. If he gets traded, if he gets traded to a place like Boston, he's going to be like, all right, so you're going to take it easy over here, you know? He'd be, he'd be a four in Boston. Like, he'd be playing that spot that we talked about grand in tonight he's pretty much playing shooting guard on that massive pistons team and you look at their lineup with all the centers and you know julia okafor wasn't playing for them tonight but they just have centers go yeah, over there like a six eight two guard I yeah mean, <laughs> doubling his field goal attempts from this year and last year i'll give him credit though he's he wanted to go there to be the man kind of a weird guy to think about being the man on a team but he's done an okay job with it so far in terms of efficiency before tonight putting up a ton of points but you know i don't know how a team with like you said a power forward playing your two guard derrick rose playing point guard they have the most confusing roster in the nba but but that guy you i mean this type of player is exactly what you would put in the celtics starting lineup yep, to never ever, ever 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 play tyson thompson <laughs> together again yep, okay yep. never ever again he'd be a dream he'd be a dream for them uh-huh. i just i don't think they have the assets to acquire which detroit gonna acquire a seventh center 
I, like I just don't kind of see a trade working. Exactly. There. I feel like I feel like Detroit always has three. Seven Maybe seven they seven. will. <laughs> <laughs> so. Maybe they'll add Tice to play the two guard next. Oh my god! Dude, what is I, this? This team makes no sense. Oh, okay. I was looking at D Rose. I was looking. Derek Rose kind of like sneaky impressed me a little bit tonight. I mean, I know he's not the old Derek Rose, but like you kind of forget about him. You just don't. You just don't watch a lot of him anymore. I completely but, forgot. In the broadcast, yeah. someone was like, "Oh, you know, he used to be at." I was half not not really, you know paying attention for a split sure. second and someone talked about well when you're a former mvp you can something something i was like who the hell on the pistons is a former mvp I was <laughs> yeah. like, I was like, what kind of ill-informed idiot is doing this broadcast and i was like oh it's derek it took uh, you know you just forget right yeah he, should. Mean, he, had, he had a good start to the regular season last year too but people forget that was a long long time ago yeah Dude, and I mean, who's they, following the pistons i mean they're the most listless team in this league but you know they brought it tonight. They got some young players, so go ahead. They're one in four. But you know now. what though? I mean, he's he's coming off the bench for them. I mean, he's a prime candidate to be traded. I feel like because he could help a lot of teams. He was last teams. year too. A lot of people yeah. thought he was going to go to the Lakers. That's going to come Inspiring up again. Contract. You know what, Bobby? That's probably going to happen. Watch him go to the Lakers. <laughs> I can just see LeBron yeah. just just adding him at the last, last right. Week. Or the Clippers. Uh, yeah, I mean this team's going to you, you do. You bring up that TP, John. This team will be interesting with that because the pieces are just so weird there. I mean, I they know. do have good players, but it's just like, well, how does all this fit together? The, the worst thing, too, is they drafted good players. I mean, they get Killian Hayes, who I love. Bay is going to, like, waste away his days there. And Isaiah Store played great tonight, too, who I wanted on the Celtics. So, like, <laughs> I guess they're the new kings who eat up some great talents and just put them in the worst situations. You like Killian Hayes? I do. He's gone off to a brutal start, though. I'll, I'll, yeah. Richard murdered him. Didn't yeah, Richard he, murder him in cold blood? He looks rough to start this year, but he's he got no rough. spacing. It's all big centers around him. I don't know what you do with that. He's like a you know kind of wing uh, point guard hybrid. I thought that pick was so weird for them. And right. Really, everything they did this year was so weird. I, I just I don't understand it. It's it's so strange watching them. And Jimmy brought up those Josh Smith. Drummond and uh, uh, Greg Monroe teams, like it's like yeah. that all over again. It really is. By the way, it looks like it looks like Halliburton is this year's hero, huh? Yeah, he looks the, good. The guy who went a pick or two before that it was like, oh, if you could have yeah. just had that guy. He when he went, you were like, ah, damn.